What's up YouTube and welcome back to a new video. I saw this tweet from Cezo, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, and I really got inspired by one of the fonts. I love those chunky bold fonts and I was wondering how that would look like in 3D. This one is going to be a short one, so let's dive into it. So that's the tweet from Cezo. But the one I was really interested in is Gianco. Not sure that's how you pronounce it, but definitely love the shapes and the chunky aspect of it. He also does have really cool content, so feel free to drop a follow. Let's start by adding a text. Shift A, text. On the alignment, I'm gonna center that. Hit tab to edit and enter the text you want. In the font category, on the regular, open font. By default, Blender is going to look at the default Windows font folder. You may not find the font that you just installed. So the other path, it will be in user, your username, app data, local, Microsoft, Windows font. I'm going to choose the font, Gianco or Gianco, I don't know how you pronounce it, the stencil one. Then in geometry, I'm going to extrude a little bit and I'm going to add some depth. I'm going to increase the resolution and I'm going to hit fill caps. I'm going to go to the side view, bring that text up, something like that. I'm going to go in my camera view, view, camera to view, and I'm going to start panning around. I want to create a thumbnail, so I'm going into the scene. 1080p format. I have a pretty big focal length, 200, but you can increase that. Always fun. I'm going to go to my render view. I'm going to open a new window and I'm going to open a shader editor. I'm going to select my text, create a new material. But before that, I'm going to add a HDRI. You can use one of the HDRI I provided in the previous lesson. I'll put the link again in the description in case you missed this one. So in the shader editor, instead of object, I'm going to go to world, shift A, S, environment texture so env i'm gonna plug that to the color with the node wrangler add-on enable i'm gonna hit ctrl t to get my mapping and texture coordinate node or i can use a plugin that i really like which is called easy hdri i will also leave a link down below i just have to navigate to my folder and i have the previews of my hdris i click create wells and there you go i'm gonna increase the strength to two I'm going back to Object in my Shader Editor. And to get this really cool anisotropic metal, it's actually quite easy. So in Metallic, I will turn that to 1. So now I have a Metallic material. And I will turn the anisotropic to 1. So now I have a Metallic anisotropic material. The thing that you want to tweak is the roughness. It's pretty rough right now, so if it's too rough, you won't see really the effect. And if it's not rough enough, you will also not notice the effect. So, you know, something around 0.2. And I will apply the same material to the plane. Honestly, that's pretty much it. The last parameter that you probably want to tweak is the rotation. Because there's a relationship between the light and the anisotropic parameter. So I'm going to tweak that a little bit. And you can see as I tweak the effect will rotate. This one is really cool, but feel free to use any other HDRIs. So these are my final values. I use 0.5 for roughness, metallic one, specular 0.5, and anisotropic one. Rotation, kind of whatever, I use uh, 0.33. The other thing I tweaked is the spacing, and the line spacing is 0.64. So it's a little bit more packed and interesting. I used one of the Grayscale Gorilla HDRIs. Thank you so much for following along. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one.